Um, I'm pretty sure that they can hear me, but I just wanted to because I know that Brenda already commented on the lighting is a little dark today, and there is a reason for that. But if there, for any reason, you can't see um, what Janet is talking about today, just put it in the comments, and we'll do our best to, to make sure you're able to see. So um, I'll just tell everyone who's here what the issue is. Here's the issue. It... I had to make a muslin so I could demonstrate for you all today. So I made it out of muslin. But the problem is muslin is not uh, easily photographed. And so the minute I put it on the dress form and turned the camera on, it just washed it right out. You couldn't see any seam or any detail. So I'm really disappointed that I didn't think in advance to make it out of a uh, color so that you would be able to see it better. So that's what I'll do for next week's program. So we'll muscle through this week and hopefully you'll be able to see detail. If you're not, you need to let us know and we'll repeat it. Um, it's just that we're not working with that sophisticated of equipment. You know, we're not in a TV studio with all the wonderful lighting um, and experts <laughs> that they have because we're certainly not lighting experts here. So we're going to muscle through and try uh, our best and see what happens. Um, what else, Jessica? What else? What else? Well, um, what about that drawing we forgot to do last week? Are we going to do that uh, this week? Well, um, we can, but I don't think we need to. Um, we had four wonderful um, entries posted on the Facebook page. Um, Janet posted Donna's as a um, post from Islander Sewing System. So if you want to see that, Donna. We also had Kay Shakespeare, Linda Pot Smalley, and Sherry Gregory show us the slopers that they made. And you can see those um, on the post section, the visitors post section of our Facebook page. And um, because we got four, we normally give away a couple, um, we draw a couple names, but I think this time we can just send all four of these women uh, a special gift. Yeah, that sounds perfect. That sounds perfect. So all four are winners and we certainly appreciate uh, you finding the time to post those pictures. I know a lot of people have made their t-shirts and I'm helping several of them over email. And so if you're having a problem and you need to show it to me and get, um, get a little extra support, I am more than happy to do that. But the quality of the picture is so important. So what I need is pictures that really show the detail not just a snapshot of you across the room or in front of the mirror with both hands up in the air taking your picture. That will not work. I have to have clear, crisp lighting so I can see the seams and the details and how it's hanging on you. I need a front, a side, and a back view. I don't need 10 or 12 pictures. Three or four will be fine. Uh, particularly, you might want to do a close-up if there's a specific issue. Let's say it's in the shoulder and neckline area. You could add another photograph of that, but I still have to see the whole garment. It's interesting how an area will be impacted by an entirely different area, but if I can't see that, I can't diagnose the problem. So I've got to see the whole t-shirt. And I know I worked with uh, someone last week and she sent me two or three pictures and I couldn't make out her t-shirt at all. And so I asked her for better pictures. Well, she went outside. And when she went outside and they took the photographs, they were absolutely perfect. Crystal clear, I could see everything. So if you go out in the daytime, mid morning to, or mid afternoon, don't do it at noon. Um, you'll get good lighting on a decent day. Even if it's cloudy, you'll get really good lighting. So um, please give that a try with a very blank background. So let's up against the house or a fence or something. But 
I, you know, nothing pretty. I don't want to be distracted. Give me a very plain background and I'll be able to help you and we'll get that sloper. I don't want anybody giving up. I don't want you to throw it in the corner and call it a water. I want the, uh, you to find the success with these slopers that I know you're going to enjoy for years and years. So that's, uh, what I have to say about the pictures. The other thing is to make sure you have a good resolution. And if you don't know what that means, check with somebody who does. But uh, pictures I got today were probably a 72, which is perfect for internet pictures. But for me, uh, they were so small and I can't enlarge them. When they're such a small resolution, they can't be made bigger and I need to be able to make them bigger so I can see that detail. Um, it's the only way I'm gonna give you the right information. <laughs> And you certainly want that, right? Um, okay. Uh, I asked Jessica to post the link to last week's newsletter at the top of um, the comments today, and I'm sure she'll well, be... Well, they just go in the comments. I'll do it right now. Okay. Um, and the reason is, is that we are hearing from several people that they either want it they don't they didn't get it but they think they're signed up for the newsletter or they're not signed up for the newsletter and they'd like to be so here's the skinny if you want to be signed up for the newsletter it won't help us for you to ask in Facebook because we don't know your email address and you don't want to post that so what you want to do is go to islandersewing.com and there's a newsletter link there but you won't be on the site for more than a minute to two minutes and the newsletter, sign up for our newsletter uh, box comes up and you can fill it out right there. So do that if you want to be in the newsletter. Let us know if you believe you're signed up and you're not receiving it. Check your junk mail and your spam mail and if it's falling in there, be sure to... Uh, make a change in your um, preferences that you want to always receive our emails in your inbox. Uh, I think that's it, but I know there was two of those um, newsletters that were really important to people and we've posted both of them now so that you can go and get a link and go back and see them. Okay, um, now, I want, oh, I know, I just want to review one thing that I talked about last week, and I'm going to say it again, and I think it's really important. Um, I'm not trying to school anybody, but, you know, our education for most of us in my age group was strictly in the classrooms, but when you have the opportunity to have video education, it's important to remember that you can uh, repeat and repeat and repeat. You can go back and rewind it. You can watch it tonight and say, wait a minute, what did she say? And stop it right there and go back a little bit and repeat. And, you know, even take notes if you like, but that video stays on this Facebook page indefinitely. You can always go back. And I know some people think they've got to go through the news feed. No. If you're doing it on your laptop or desktop, you're gonna find a menu on the left-hand side and there's a link called videos. You click on that and all of our videos are there in reverse chronological order, every single one of them. So you'll be able to find it. And of course, we've told you about the directory that Mary Jackson created for us and that's on our website and it's on the link videos. And first paragraph on that page will tell you exactly how to get that up and how to sort it for, um, let's say that you want something on fitting or you want something on collars. You could put those terms in and it will sort it and come back and give you all the videos that might address collar making or all the uh, videos that might address whatever subject you're looking for. So all of that is available to you. Um, but please watch the video multiple times, then ask your questions because if you've repeated it a few times, you've probably picked up more information that's going to stick in your head and it will make a whole lot more sense than me just spoon feeding you everything. So I'm going to, I'm going to give you the videos and you can repeat them as often as you want 
and but I'm just telling you that one time through isn't going to give you all the information you need. So please watch again and again before you set out to do your project. Sometimes I find people that have gone and didn't do that and they misunderstood and they cut out the wrong pattern or they went off in the wrong direction right in the beginning and wasted a lot of their own valuable time. So that's what I have to say about video education. Take advantage of it. It's great. Okay. Um, now, for those of you who haven't uh, been with us in the last couple of weeks, I want to just let you know what we're doing. We are working on fitting a woven bodice. We just finished our um, knit bodice. And again, those are all archived and you can watch those if you missed them. But in this case, we're doing a woven bodice, and I've chosen pattern CS1301 from Connie Crawford's collection that we sell on our website. And it's a princess seam, shoulder princess seam. Princess seams are the seams that come down across the apex of the bust and come all the way to the hem. Sometimes they come out of the arm side. But in this case, it's coming straight off the shoulder and it repeats that same uh, seaming in the back. And these seams are the very best opportunity to get a, an excellent fit on any body shape because they allow us to take that seam in and out wherever we need to, to come across the curved shape of a woman's body. And um, you can't hardly get that kind of detail any other way. We also have 1302, which is the arm side princess seam, and the other block sloper pattern we have is 1201, and that is a darted block. So in the example of you would want a garment, but you didn't want the seaming down the front, and a lot of times you don't because maybe it's the pattern of the fabric or just the look of the garment, then you would want to use a darted sloper. So I want to just keep everybody up to date. What is a sloper? What is a block? A lot of times they're used synonymously. So one person's sloper is another person's block. But basically a block is just the basics of a garment. So in a bodice, it's just going to be you know, uh, a plain neckline, a simple sleeve, a very, no design lines, no special design lines of any kind, just a basic. If you're a pattern designer or you aspire to want to design some of your own, then you would take that block and you would manipulate it to create the extra seaming or less seaming or different shapes different hemlines, different collars, different sleeves, cuffs, all those things. If you do not inspire to be a pattern designer, then you will use your sloper to superimpose over the commercial patterns that you want to make. And instantly, when you lay that pattern that you know fits you to a T on top of that commercial pattern, the light bulb goes off immediately and says, I know why this wouldn't fit me. I'm so glad I'm not making this right now because the arm side would be too big or the shoulder slope would be so wrong. I'd have terrible wrinkles or it wouldn't hang right in the back because I've got a little bit of a rounded back or whatever the issues are. The other, the patterns don't know this about your body, but your sloper does. So you'll lay your sloper on your pattern and you'll know exactly what you need to do and what size. So many times sizes are arbitrary in patterns and actually they really are arbitrary. And so whatever the pattern maker decides is a large or a 16 or whatever, that's what it is. But it doesn't mean the next pattern maker has that in mind. So the sloper, once you've created a few of these slopers, uh, you will have your go-to every time you get out a pattern, you'll be able to take that sloper and say, uh -huh, that, that, uh, here's where I need to make that small change and over here and now I can cut it out and I can sew it up and I know when I slip it on, it's going to fit. I know it's going to hang straight. I have no worries. So that's why we make a sloper. Okay, so to make the sloper, once again, I'm using muslin and in the kits that we're providing, 
they include muslin. And if you're not trying to teach a class online, that's exactly what you want. <laughs> but it, um, so you want a nice, good quality muslin. Very inexpensive or cheap, lightweight muslins will shrink when you press them. Well, you don't want that because you get in this shape just to your body. You don't want to take a steam iron to it and then have it change its shape. So make sure you're using a quality muslin. Do you have to use muslin? No. You could use a Kona cotton. It's a little bit on the heavy side. Uh, it's a little bit heavier than muslin, but I think that's what I'm going to use next week so that you can see it. it. comes in a lot of colors. You could use a very simple stripe firmly woven cotton or and you that stripe would have to be a woven stripe not a printed stripe if it's a woven stripe it will help you with your grain line and help you make sure your whole pattern is straight the same thing goes for a gingham check if you find a gingham and it's woven not printed it, it's perfect for making muslins out of because you have your cross grain with your checks and you have your vertical line as well so it also helps you, the eye, be sure that that garment is hanging as straight as it absolutely should. Okay, so if you want to collect your supplies, those are the types of fabrics you need. And I even said last week, you can use a, an old sheet. They're not going to shrink. They're been worn. It's great. Just use something light colored or faded so that you'll be able to write on it. I like to write on mine. You may not, but you want to be able to see things. And that was one of my disappointments was that I have the vertical center front line drawn in Sharpie here. And I also have created a horizontal line. And you're going to need to have those so that you can see when it's hanging on the body if you, any of those lines are off or askew because if they are then that means we need to make a correction in the pattern so it hangs straight from your body uh, so you want to have a sharpie uh, have a nice dark ballpoint pen I prefer black medium point something that glides really nice for tracing your pattern out of course you need pattern paper uh, some tape is also important to have around because sometimes you're going to have to add to that pattern or cut it apart and put it back together. So the tape is key. You could use repositional tape, repositionable tape, <laughs> or you can use just a transparent uh, scotch tape. Uh, okay. Now, remember, we're going to measure the fullest part of the bust. That's straight across the nipple area that in our world is called the apex. Okay, but straight across, make sure it's level in the back all the way around. It's fitting snugly but not tight. That is the measurement plus your cup size that you're going to cut out. And you're going to have five pattern pieces to cut. Two fronts, you've got your side front and your center front. You've got your side back and your center back. Then you have a sleeve. We don't put the sleeve in. You can cut it out if you want. I'm not sure you even want to do that yet because all of what we might have to do here could impact the shape or the position or the size of the arm side. So we're going to leave the sleeve aside for now and just sew the fronts and the backs together and then sew those together at the side seams. All of these seams are 5 8 inch. Now you'll see that in the pattern guide. When you get the pattern, you, a lot of you already have it, you're going to have this pattern guide. And it's going to give you that same information. But I'm just pointing it out as we go. Um, do not worry about other measurements of your body. Because they will show up in the draft and, or in the muslin. And will correct them in the muslin. If you correct them in advance. And unless you're an advanced fitter. 
and in that case you don't need me but unless you're advanced at it that could impact something and cause us to make all kinds of unnecessary corrections to get, try to get it straightened out. So don't make any changes to start with. So we're gonna cut all of those pieces out. And then I take my Sharpie and on both fronts, we're gonna draw that center front line. And I think that's what it's called on the pattern. Yes, all patterns. All patterns should have a center front line on them or indicate where the center front is. And if they don't, they weren't drafted properly because this is where you need to start. <laughs> so if they didn't, there, there's part of the problem. Okay, so we're going to make that vertical line on both fronts. And then I chose an arbitrary horizontal line. I think I actually started on one of the notches on the side. And I just want a line that is perpendicular to the floor. Parallel to the floor and perpendicular to the center front line. I know the difference, I just say them backwards sometimes. So anyway, and this also is going to help you see if it's level on the body. Now, if you did gingham check, you'll be able to see that with one of your lines of the check. But I, I think having just a nice bold black line on here really tells the story immediately. So remember, we're not sewing up the shoulder seams. So don't sew up the shoulder seams. Okay. And remember to only base these seams, maybe at a five or a six, because it chances are, depending on if you have any air uh, issues in the bust area, we may have to open up one of these seams and add a little fabric or whatever to make it expand. And in that case, you want to be able just to pop those stitches out. Now, many of you have seen me ease in a sleeve cap and some of you who've taken say my motor city jacket class that's right behind me and that blue one over there as well if you've taken that class you know how to ease in a princess seam so in the case of this pattern guide connie is telling you to crimp the curved edge of the curved piece so, and then you put that against the feed dog to bring that in. So just for kicks, I did, um, I did crimp one. And when I put it in, it was slightly more ripply than the one I just eased in the way I do with the sleeve cap. So if you've seen me easing a sleeve cap or a princess seam, that's what you really should do. Because anytime you crimp or gather something, you risk the uh, possibility of that little rippling just always being there. And there was a decided difference to my eye as the seamstress when I went to press this between the two sides. The one I crimped and the one I eased in. Now maybe I crimped it a little too much, I don't know. But that's the problem with crimping. You really don't have a gauge. But easing it in, it eased in beautifully for me. Now, I am working with the A to double D cup pattern size. I am not working with the larger cup sizes. That might be a little more problematic. The larger that curve gets to go over the bust, it may need some crimping. Just a tip. Um, hmm, let's see, what else do we need to talk about here? All right, let me show you some samples of muslins so you kind of get an idea for those of you who haven't made them or really have been kind of mystified uh, by muslin making. So, see here, I have some examples. This is a new pattern that's coming out. It's a children's pattern. And so we made up the muslins in three of the size ranges. So here's a smaller size. What we learned was the center front was too short. So we had to add this much on to the center front. 
And I think on some of them, we actually actually had to add the fabric um, to get that center front to hang just perfectly. And you see this, see that we have that center front line is key. You can see I have made notes on here to tell me what needs to be changed or anything I think I need to know and I could forget. Seam allowances, who it's for, the date, whatever pertinent information that you could imagine needing later goes on here. And so then these, once these muslins are made, they just go in the closet. You can trash them if you want, but for me, they go in the closet because I might need them to refer to for the next pattern or the next children's size, whatever I'm making for someone. So, um... That's why the ballpoint pen and the Sharpie, feel free to just draw all over these things. Um, here's a recent one, and I'm trying to fit myself in this one, and the shoulder was too wide. Now, my, my Sharpie bled, but I need to bring my shoulder seam back to this line right here. So it's kind of a bad example because I was trying to fit myself, but I know right here is where my shoulder line is. So again, just, um, uh, oh, I've had to add on to the sides here. So I've just laid fabric on here. You can kind of see that. Again, it's kind of hard in the muslin. Um, here's one that I did and I didn't have any muslin at the time. So I used an old quilter's cotton and a little bit of Kona in the back, but you see the straight lines across the back? Well, this was an example where I was trying to do that adjustment we talked about for our rounded backs. Oh, I don't remember when we did that. Ways back when we were doing the Easy Cape. It's in the Easy Cape videos. And we want to make sure it lays flat. Well, by having this straight line at the back, you know immediately when you've released enough to get that straight. And you could even do things like, instead of putting a pocket on, in this one, I drew where it would go to see if it looked good, see if it was in the right place for my hand. I didn't even have to put the pocket on. Okay, so that kind of gives you the story of muslin. All right, so we talked about the horizontal, the vertical lines, and now you're going to baste it all together. Is everybody with me? And do we have any questions so far, Jess? Um, I did have some questions in the beginning. I think that you've answered them by this point, but if anybody still has one that we missed by some chance, please put it in the comments. Um. There is, do you stay stitch the neckline and arms? Um, it's not a bad idea. Uh, more the neckline than the arm side, but yeah, it's not a bad idea. It depends on how much you're manipulating it. I'm not sewing a collar to this. And as long as it's a firmly woven um, and I'm not manipulating it a lot, it should be fine. But in the event that you do, you could stretch that out and then it would be misshapen um, when you go to lay it on a commercial pattern. You'll wonder, why is my neckline so much wonky compared to the pattern? So yeah, go ahead. And when you um, stay stitch, you stay stitch within the seam allowance. So if the seam allowance is 3 eighths, you want to stay stitch at about a quarter. You want to be just shy of the seam allowance because if you ever sew anything to something you've stay stitched, you don't want to have to take it out. Um, Monique is wondering, when are you basting the shoulders? When we fit. So when we fit, we're going to fit this either on a dress form or a person. So if you're fitting it on a dress form, that's when you'll do it. If you're fitting it on yourself, you need a friend. You really need a friend. <laughs> you cannot fit this yourself easily. Um, if you are in that stay-at-home uh, lockdown and nobody can come and help you, God bless you. I hope you work it out. But some of the biggest problems is 
when you see what we're going to do to fit that shoulder seam, if you've got any rounding to the back or any kind of shoulder slope, dowager's hump, whatever, you aren't going to be able to fit that and know that it's um, correct. So definitely uh, consider a little help. And I know husbands aren't usually very much help. My husband, um, he would try. He would do it if I asked him. But he's just a little too heavy-handed and just not fussy. And he would say, oh, it's fine to me. <laughs> so, yeah, no, uh, uh, he wouldn't be very much help. Okay. Um, okay, yes. I still have something. Uh, Sherry's wondering, should the horizontal line be in a certain place? This one looks like it's between the waist and hip. Yeah, I picked an arbitrary place. And if the pattern has, and I noticed this one did not, but if it's marked at the waist, it'd be a good idea to put it there because it would help you identify if it's in the right place. In this particular pattern, or this particular fit the waist I always know where the waist is because on a dress form it's identifying all the key points which is waist shoulder seam side seam center front and center back those are key and if you get all those lined up and everything's hanging straight from all of those places the garment's going to be beautiful and hang nice and so many times it's not because we're not paper dolls and if the garment isn't shaped for our body, it, it can just get hung up someplace and then cause it to shift or pitch in the wrong direction. And a lot of us in my age group have found that that's exactly what happens to a garment when we start to, to round back here, then the back of the garment hikes up. And when we did our easy cape, we showed a, an alteration for that. But that isn't always the alteration you want because with that alteration we would have to put a seam in the center back well this already has two seams here and I'm not sure I'd like the look of a yet another seam now if I'm using a solid linen probably look pretty because seams look really nice in linen but if there's any kind of stripe plaid check print to this fabric and I'm cutting it into smaller and smaller sections Sometimes that's not so pleasing. So you need to take all that into consideration. But um, yeah, so that would be, uh, this. Will, what we'll be showing you is a second alteration for rounded backs where you don't have to put a seam down the center back. And I think that's gonna be pretty, uh, pretty fun and exciting for some. <laughs> okay. Um, hey, Janet, mm -hmm. Clarka has a question that a couple people have asked as well um what is the fix um she says in the back specifically what is the fix for the diagonal line from below the shoulder blade on a rounded back towards the side waist well i'm going to show you all right okay. hang on to your hat hang, hang on to your hat okay um all right the first First thing we want to do once we get this stitched up and on a body, and I honestly prefer a dress form or somebody fitting another person. Like I said, it's very difficult to fit yourself. So we put this on, and what we know is we want this straight line to, to be parallel to the floor. So the first thing we're going to do is overlap so that both sides are right on top of each other at that center front line. And what happens with this pattern, with this particular body, is gonna be very helpful in this demonstration because I have created a bump in the back so that has a rounded back. And just to show you, now some people's backs are rounded more and some are less. And as we age, it could become more severe. Uh, but most people, once we hit a certain age, have that problem. Unless they're a yoga instructor or a ballet dancer, 
you know, the posture just gives. Okay, so we're going to kind of line that up. And we're going to get the side seam lined up. So we have a side seam. You see there's a side seam right here. So we know we want that to hang from there. And if I pull this way up where it would be at 5 8 inch, let me just do that for you. Hey, and everybody, this is where you use pins. So you can get your pins back out now. All right, so I'm just going to pretend like we have a 5 8 inch seam allowance in here. And we've got that rounded back on this dress form. Hey, Janet. Yeah? Um, another Janet yes. says that her waistline is not level. Should she go by her front waistline or her back? Well, both. See, the thing is, is that, Janet, you have a unique body. We all have a unique body, unless we happen to be identical twins. So, you have a unique body. We want this to fit you, front, back, sideways, everywhere, so it hangs straight. So many times, garments are pitching every which way, and we don't even notice. We don't look at the back and see that our garment's hanging up too high or shifting to the right. Um... This is particularly not only in jackets, but skirts. Because the same thing that happens up here with the bump on the shoulder to create the back to hike up happens in a skirt when someone has a pronounced derriere. So then they walk around and you see them and their hem on their skirts going at an angle like this. You know, here's the front <laughs> and here's the back hiking way up. So, um, uh, that's what happens because we've lost custom sewing. We've lost custom, making our garments custom. And so people accept that look. I could never accept that look, but I guess because I knew how to fix it. So anyway, so we've smoothed this up. And here's what I want to kind of get this up here so you can see. If we do that, all right, we put that 5 8 inch shoulder seam, which if you bought a pattern and you cut it out and you hope it's going to look nice on you, it's exactly what you would have done. The 5 8 inch seam allowance in the shoulder, just like they said. And here's what's happening. Can you see how it's pitching and how this is no longer... How can I get rid of these things? There. I have to be able to see too. So can you see how that is pitching and that line is going up that's because we need more fabric back here but it's compounding the whole garment this looks like it's pitching down and this is pitching up and it's never going to hang right it's going to look kind of funny in the back because it's hiked up so what we want to do is give some more fabric to the back So, we want to make sure that everything is smooth and straight here. So, we're going to smooth this up. Make sure that everything's laying really nice. And we haven't adjusted this yet, but right now I'm just trying to get the shoulder. So, right in this area here, give it a little loving smoothing. Now, back here, we need more fabric to come over this. So what we're going to do is we're going to add some fabric. Now let me see if I can find something I can add to it that's colorful. Okay, Jessica, talk among yourselves. Give me one second. Let me grab something. Talk amongst ourselves. I'm sure I can find some fabric here somewhere. Okay, okay. Somewhere under the table. In the lock, in the garbage can. Okay, so what I want to do is add some fabric to that shoulder. Which shoulder are we working with? This one? Yeah. So I don't have any tape here, but I would tape that fabric on there to keep it nice and smooth. But right now, I'm just going to tape it, uh, pin it for you. But let's pretend this is tape. 
Okay, so like masking tape, painter's tape, something like that. All right, so we've added that on there. Now, we want to let this down until that is straight across. Okay? Does that look fairly straight? It's so dark in here, I can't see. <laughs> it's a little, it's a little, it still needs to go down a little. All right. Uh, and um, what will be the max amount? There. That, what will be the max amount that you can add? Well, um, unless somebody is severely hunchbacked, and I'm talking about, and I don't even see people like that anymore. Um, you, it, you'll be able to add whatever you need. Never seen a body, and Connie assured me she's never seen one that couldn't be uh, corrected this way. Okay, so now what we're going to do is create a new seam line. And maybe our front seam line is correct, but look here. When I pin this to get that to hang straight, here's our new seam line. And we are going to go over this at the end. So in a week or two, I will show you how to transfer all this to your pattern if that is something that you need help with. But what you're going to see is that now I've added considerably. Here's my new seam line. So I've had added mm, five eighths, three quarters, almost an inch to get that to hang straight. And I know it doesn't look perfect right here, but it is hanging straight. It's still a little big on her. But we get a much, this side anyway, let's see. This side's up too high, but there we go, there we go. Anyway, you get the idea. And like I said, next week I'll get a better color so you'll be able to see what we're doing better. But we're trying to get that nice and straight. We've added that fabric. And then we're going to take a marker and do a little dotted line right along the pin line, which is your seam line. So my seam line stayed in the same place in the front in this particular garment, in this particular body, not in everybody's. But in this case, if you've got a rounded back and you're pretty... Uh, average in the front chances are then the only correction is going to be to the back and so the front will stay the same all right and then what you're going to need to do is again come in with the marker and you'll be drawing in the new neckline so there's a whole new neckline because you missed this much fabric and by adding all of that up here that fabric is going to come up over that rounded part. Now, when it hangs on a hanger, it, it looks a little weird, just a little bit loose up in here or something. You'll see, maybe. But once you put it on the body that needs that, it looks beautiful. So, we don't care what it looks like on the hanger or on the cutting table. We care what it looks like when we put it on our body, and that's the whole point of this. Now... Judy's wondering, how does that change the armhole? Well, it's going to make the back armhole longer. The back armhole is longer. But we'll get to that when we get to our uh, transferring everything over. But this is another reason why we didn't cut out our sleeve or put it in yet. We want to get this whole part of the torso fitted, hanging straight, looking beautiful. Then piece of cake get the sleeve in and I know some people have upper arm issues and we will address those as well but right now let's talk about this one because I know a lot of sewers are in the same boat same age group where they kind of need a little bit of this or maybe somebody you sew for needs that so that will be the first thing now if it's still so rounded that there's extra fabric up here then 
a little quarter inch dart can be taken right in the center. And you don't have to ask me how long because it will be obvious. The minute it's going to cup to that area. So the minute that the dart's not needed anymore, it'll be obvious. It's probably only going to be an inch to a well, three quarters to an inch long. And the, at the very worst, a real round in here, you might also need tiny little dart that same quarter inch pinch out of the shoulder seam in the back. And again, if you need those, we'll show you how to correct your pattern so that um, they're there. But right now, we just want to get a nice fitting, uh, straight hanging torso for our bodice. I'm still feel like that's pitching up too much in the back. Well, Hmm. Hanging straight there. Okay. We're just hanging straight here. And it's too big for this uh, dress form. So that's part of the problem as well. And we'll work on taking in and out on here. Now, one thing I didn't mention when I started was there's always been this um, debate over when you try on a muslin for fitting or a garment for fitting, should you put it on inside out? Because that way you could pinch out the seams really easily and you can mark your seam line very easily. And I was always taught, no, you had to do it the other way. But for this type of fitting, I'm going to say it's okay to do it inside out because it's much easier to see what you're doing. Unless you have an asymmetrical body and you know you have an asymmetrical body. What's an asymmetrical body? It's where this side does not look the same as this side. One shoulder might be lower or higher. Same thing with the breast, same thing with the hip. And usually that's not the case in human beings unless they've had um, an illness or an accident. That can happen. If you're slightly asymmetrical, no problem, we can fix that. But if you're completely asymmetrical, then we're going to have to make two drafts. Um, okay, anything else? So as far as what you're talking about there, you, you will be able to address as we move on about like if someone has larger hips. Yes, yes. So, um, yeah. And see, like this thing has way too much hip for my dress form. There's way more hip here than I need. Um, so you want to make sure whatever you're trying this on is the exact measurement and shape that you are. So remember, we talked about padding a dress form before. So if you bought a dress form, let's say you bought this dress form, but you need to add six inches to the hip line. Everything else is perfect, but the hip, you're bigger in the hip. You need six more inches. You don't just wrap a bunch of batting around until it measures six inches bigger. You've got to measure yourself in the front from side seam to side seam and in the back from side seam to side seam and create the padding accordingly. So in other words, you may be adding four of those six inches to the back and only two of them to the front. But if you don't do it, guess what happens? If you don't do it that way, then your side seam ends up being pitched back back here or forward because you ha um, don't have it, have it drafted according to your body. So Linda is asking for clarification. Uh, the first lesson is to get the muslin to hang correct. The, yeah. Okay. The most important thing in having a well-executed garment is for it to hang straight. 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 And this should be perpendicular, these lines across here. That garment will be more comfortable. It will look nicer. And it will be more pleasing uh, to whomever's wearing it uh, as far as the look at it. Like I said, the comfort as well. And you know, a lot of people have never had a garment that was custom made like that, or maybe only once in their life. Wedding dress, mother of the bride, whatever. 
and really it's once we demystify some of this stuff it's really not difficult to have all your garments fit you within a reasonable amount of uh, of a good fit i mean some oh. some things are loose and they're not supposed to be all that um fitted yes uh, so what you're saying really speaks to ethel's question of can you really get a pleasing bodice with a stick Significant asymmetrical hip. I feel I I I'm sensing her doubt. Okay, so she has a sub, significant hip. A, so yeah, yep, asymmetrical hip. So what Ethel's telling me is one hip is how much higher is that one hip than the other? Like when you measure from your waist to the floor, what's the difference from one side to the other? Um, let me think and make sure I'm clear about this. Okay. So yeah, uh, if the side, if it pitches back, it means it needs more fabric in the back. It's pulling, it's pulling from the front to get that fabric up over here. So it's saying, Hey, give me some of that. And if you want, and if it pitches the opposite way, then you don't have enough here. Maybe you have a longer torso here. And so you're pulling on this, and then that's what will make it pitch toward the front. Okay, so. Ethel says, hopefully that helps, um, Pamela. Uh, Ethel says two inches. Two. That's a big difference, Ethel. Okay, um, the most I've ever seen is like three quarters to an inch. But here's the thing. Um, you obviously have to... Um, Choose carefully the silhouette of the garment that you wear. And you could wear a, uh, a princess seam bodice, but you'd want it to kind of flare out and be away from the hip here. and But fit it in the waist and then let it flare away from the hip, thus disguising the fact that one of those hips is higher than the other. A lot of what we do when our bodies... I mean, I have my issues. We all have them. I'm short. I'm apple shaped. There are certain styles. I just, I wouldn't even consider wearing. I put them on. I look like a butterball. They're just not uh, for my height and size and shape. So, I would, I, you could get it fitted all the way up and then just have more of a flare out here, um, and that's perfectly acceptable in a princess seam like that. I hope that's what you were looking for, Ethel. Um, and she is wondering, when I construct the bodice, can I do it with the seam allowance on the outside so it's easier to adjust? Yeah, I already covered that, Jess, just a few minutes okay. ago. Let and again, sure. if you have an asymmetrical body, not so much. But if you've got a symmetrical body, Go ahead, these seams are on the outside. See, this is what I was afraid of. You really can't see what I'm doing, but these seams are on the outside, absolutely. So okay. that we can grab a hold of them and pin them in. And when you pin them in deeper and then you mark your seam allowance, it's all on the wrong side. So then when you go to the sewing machine, you don't have to transfer, you can see right what you're doing. And I always go to the machine and test it out before calling it absolutely a done pattern. short torso i know you're going to ask that janet i answered your email today okay so janet is a shorter person a shorter stature um, maybe it's in the name yeah i don't know she's even shorter than i am i think uh -huh. she's like 410 or 411 but anyway i know that she has she usually takes a pinch out here and a pinch out here i'd rather in this particular that you not take those out until we test it. 
I want this to be perfect for you. And with your shorter torso, I know that you have an issue. I had a girlfriend, 4'11", never weighed more than 97 pounds, and she had a shop in the kids' department. Um, it was frustrating because the adult stuff was out of proportion for her. So I get it. I get it completely. We all sew for different reasons, but you want to get those proportions correct. But we can do that. We can do that. But if you take it out ahead of time, um, then you're on your own as far as making sure you get that corrected. So either time, Janet, if you feel when you measure yourself, what you want to do is you're going to measure from the shoulder seam to the apex. Then you're going to measure on your pattern to the apex. Okay? And if that is significantly different, then you know this is where you need to make a, a small adjustment. Same thing from uh, the, the waist down. Now, I wouldn't worry about it as much as here. But what's going to happen here is we're going to end up shortening that arm side. Now, when you shorten that arm side, Janet, is you, I think you said that's good because you want that arm side up a little higher because it ends up being too low on you. Is that correct? I'm pretty sure. So, um, I, I've not had to make that adjustment. I am, I am short, but I have a average person of five sixes body length. Mine is my legs are so doggone short. So I've never had to have that issue even though I am short. I would be considered petite, but when I would buy, try to buy garments in the petite department, they were too short in the waist because I have an average waist length. So then the waist would be up here, It'd be like an inch too high on me. Um, so, you know, again, ready to wear is not... Uh, the be-all, end-all of getting a good fit, that's for sure. So, Janet, I guess I kind of left you wide open. Uh, if you've always made that adjustment, you know better than I do. But, again, if you measure from here to the apex and the pattern is an inch longer than you are, um, obviously you're going to need to get rid of some of that. On the muslin so what we're doing is we're transferring on the center front you're going to see a center front line okay and it goes right straight down this front piece I want you to transfer that line onto your muslin both the right and left side this is your center front line and they must overlap if they don't let's say that you're they don't someplace well that's where we don't we have to add but we want to at least have that extra inch there so we can adjust it if we need to. And then, like I said, I just drew a perpendicular line, perpendicular to this center front line, at an arbitrary point. Um, if Again, if a pattern that you're using, you're making a muslin, happens to have a waist mark, most of them do, then I'd do it right at the waist. Um, you know, it's so important, and I know Janet has found this out quicker than most because of her short stature, that garments are made in proportions, but those proportions are arbitrary. They are made for a 26-year-old woman who's five foot six and has an hourglass figure. Well, how many of us can um, raise our hand to that? It's just not the average person. So each one of those proportions were made for, they have to pick something. It's not, I remember taking people on tours of Simplicity and McCall's and inevitably I'd have uh, a home sewer who wanted to debate the company president, oh this one time was so embarrassing, about why can't you make patterns to fit. And there was nothing they could explain to this woman 
was that why don't you just line up 50 people? You're going to see they could all use that same pattern, but it isn't going to fit all 50 people right. We're all a little bit different. So proportions are important. But when we draft a pattern, we draft it with an arbitrary point for the apex, an arbitrary point for the waist, an arbitrary point for the hip. And if we're going down into pants, we're going to have one for the knee. So all those proportions... And if you're shorter or longer, you've got to move those or your whole, anybody who's tried to shorten a pair of pants, remember when bell bottoms were in? Well, if you were five foot two and you had to cut four inches off of those bell bottoms, they weren't much of a bell bottom anymore. It changed it. So um, proportions are really important in pattern making and garment sewing. wondering on that perpendicular line do you draw it after the muslin is put together no i drew them before i sewed it together it's easier okay and then a question um do you have muslin in stock i will uh hopefully by the end of the week um we we went through 100 yards in three or four days. It was kind of shocking. So we have um, a couple hundred more yards coming in, and it should be here by Friday at the latest, and then we'll be shipping out. So if you're ordering muslin or a kit, just know there'll be a slight delay. All right. Sandy asked that earlier. I didn't want her to think. I forgot. I had to back order a few people this week, but I sent everything else in their kit to them. Um, in case they wanted to at least read the guide or cut out the pattern pieces or whatever. Um, and again, if you're in a real hurry, and I notice a lot of people are, uh, you could use something else in the meantime. Um, but your muslin, I, the minute the truck hits here, trust me, I, I will cut it as fast as I can and run it to the post office. And a few oh. people got back ordered on 1201. And I've got those back in stock, so those will be going out too. And that's the darted block. And I know there's been questions, well, uh, do I need a darted block and a princess seam block? Do I need the shoulder seam and the arm uh, princess? No, but I think you need at least one princess and one darted. Because again, there are places where are garments where you don't want all this seaming or all this shaping. But you still want to know that it's going to hang at the right shoulder slope. It's not going to hike up in the back or the front. You know, somebody with a full tummy could have the exact, you know, opposite problem and be pulling it from the back because they have a fuller tummy. So whatever it might be, we want to make sure that um, we have the right sloper. So the darted block and at least one princess block will be the best thing to have in your sewing arsenal. And then, of course, you've got your knit block if you participated in the knit fit. And those of you who have taken my pat, pant drafting class, um, that serves skirts as well as pants. So once you have that pant draft added to your bodice um, drafts or slopers, you're good to make a whole wardrobe. And you know it'll fit. So can you clarify this, please? Um, the issue with the seams on the outside is if you turn the garment inside out, the left side of the garment will be on the right side of the body. That's no custom fit. Oh, go ahead. That is correct. That is correct. So if I take this off and flip it around, I'm going to, whatever correction I've made on the left was now going to be on the right. So if you are an asymmetrical person, that might not work for you. Most of us are not, and not a significant amount. If you buy ready-to-wear and you make garments and you don't make a lot of changes, chances are you don't have a significant difference from one side to the other. I have taught pattern drafting, well, pant drafting specifically for quite a few years, and I've only had to do one asymmetrical. So it's very unlikely. Okay, dokie. 
So, um, I think we're good. Yeah. So I just, um, I want to re reiterate something, Jess. Okay. Anywhere that we have, you know, added fabric and then we pin it, we're going to take a bright colored marker and make that stitching line. So when we take this apart, we know that we've added this much fabric and our stitching line is up here. And we also know that our stitching lines stay the same over here in this particular case. But anytime you make changes and once you get it all pinned, then you want to mark it. That's why we use muslin because we don't care if we put marker on it. We don't care if we write on it in ink because that's the best thing we can do. And then we know what we're doing. Okay, Jess, you were going to say something else? Um, I'm just going to say I'm sure you were planning on doing this anyway, but there were a couple questions, um, you know, people who haven't received uh, their stuff yet. They know it's coming. They're not asking about that. But uh -huh. Jess, could you just give um, a final summary of where you are at and what they should be prepared for to be caught up and ready to start next week? Well, just exactly where you were this week. Um, just get your muslin cut, get your markings made, baste up your seams at 5 8 leave the shoulder seams open. And if you want to go ahead and attempt kind of playing around to fit it, if you, especially if you have this issue, remember we dealt with shoulder slope issues too, and that could be an issue. So you want to pin this up at 5 8 and if you're finding... If you're finding when you pin this up that you're getting a bunch of drag marks right here, that means that the shoulder slope isn't correct. So if you got some drag marks in here, let's see if I can get some like that, you know, and it's like kind of like doing a little darty thing there, then um, you want to uh, smooth that out. And get that extra fabric that you might um, want to smooth out. Maybe it, you want to take a little bit more. Maybe you, for you, because of your shape. And this might pertain to you, Janet. When you've got too much here, we're just going to smooth it up. And we're going to pin it. And maybe we're going to move your seam line down a little bit. And then it'll lay right smooth and nice right there. So, I've not dealt with your particular issue so I'm giving you the best advice I know how but if we've got those little drag marks then that means our shoulder slope is wrong so if we put our shoulder slope see if I can make it do the wrong thing and then we have those bumps we're going to change that shoulder slope so in other words this shoulder let's say that it's going at a 75 degree angle but you need a 60 or a 70 or 68, whatever it might be. You've got to change the angle of that seam. And all I want you to do is pin it into place. And once it lays nice and smooth here, and you've got that all pinned into place, then you take that marker and mark along those pin lines. And then you'll know the angle that you need for a shoulder slope. And then every time you go to lie this pattern onto another pattern, and maybe your shoulder slope is going like more like this, a different angle, okay? Then you will change that angle on that commercial pattern. So when you sew it together, you know that you're not going to have those drag marks right here because you've got the right shoulder slope. So what I want you to play with this week is that shoulder slope. If you've got a rounded back issue, remember to tape that fabric on there and then get a nice fit. And any issues you have, we'll address next week for the shoulder slope and the back. And then we'll move on to fitting the princess seam, which means in a lot of cases, we'll have to open the princess seam up. If it's not completely covering your bust or it's too tight, we may need to let that out and add a little fabric and change that seam line. And all of this stuff we're doing on the muslin, then when we take the muslin off, lay it on our work table, we will get our a pattern and make the changes to the original pattern 
so that it reflects our muslin. Now for me, what I would do as after I did that, I'd cut out another muslin and try it on just to make sure I didn't make any mistake. Transferring things, as we all know, anybody can make a mistake, transferring the directions on a recipe. Half a cup instead of a quarter cup, whatever. It can happen, so just to be double safe sure, before I cut out expensive fashion fabric, I might make a, a final muslin. Janet, did you cover the question about the diagonal lines under the shoulder blades? In the back? Yes. That's where your shoulder blades are, I think. Yeah, they're right here. <laughs> so somebody has some drag marks at the at the underneath the shoulder blades here. That's very likely because there's not enough fabric here. Drag lines usually point to the problems. You usually can see. Send me a picture if you've got something like that and I can better address it. Rest assured, if there's drag lines and folds and tucks, it means something's not right. But we're going to fix it. What else, Jessica? Okay, so we're done with questions, and we're way over time, so I think we should go. Um, a lot of good information, a lot of good information. Well, and you know, we're just, I know so many of you are so excited at the prospect of being able to rest assured a garment's going to fit you and just have fun with the sewing and the fabrics and the notions. But it's going to take us a couple of weeks, maybe longer, to get there. So be patient, relax. We're going to get there, and we'll address all the different issues. And eventually what we're going to get to is fitting the armhole. And then our final step will be um, transferring all of the corrections we made onto our pattern. And I'll try to cover as many as I can uh, so that you can see them and the, you know, the realistically see the changes. Of course, everyone's changes are gonna be a little bit different. Um, so I'll try to cover a little bit of you know, all the basics. And then, then you'll be ready to do the same, but don't get ahead of me. Because the people that I've seen, some of them got ahead of me and, and probably did just fine. But if you're not 100% sure, don't go ahead because you might be, uh, I had one lady who probably wasted a whole week, um, uh, you know, doing something that wasn't necessary because she got too far ahead. Because she's getting excited. I get it. But I can't come to your house because I'm in Michigan and they won't let me leave. So we're just going to have to do this uh, once a week and we will get through it. And you'll be glad you did. So coming up next week, we will continue with the muslin. But I'm going to get something in a color where you can really see what I'm doing. And um, we'll review what we went over this week and then we'll move to the next and if you've got yours and you've started doing a little bit of fitting and you have questions at that point we'll address those as well great okay well i'm glad that you all joined us here and i'm really having a lot of fun i never taught uh uh so much fitting before i was always um so excited about construction and teaching people how to sew simple and complex shapes without using pins or basting that I've just sort of neglected the fitting but it's people are really eager to get something to fit and I think making a muslin and making a sloper is the best way for the average sewer to have more confidence sewing. So that's what we're doing, but we'll get back to construction soon because that is, is what Islander Sewing Systems is all about, is sewing faster and um, coming out with a better looking garment. So we'll get back to sewing soon. 
I'll see you next week. And thanks for joining Jessica Johnson and, and I. And we've really enjoyed our time together. Thank you, everyone. Have a great week. Bye.